Good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this, uh, this um, workshop. Uh, um, my name is Luca. My and, name is Andrea. Uh, uh, let's wait uh, a few seconds, maybe, for someone to join. So, um, in today's um, in today workshop, we're going to talk about uh, IT versus finance. Sorry. So, as uh, the live, uh, um, as always, some problems. So, uh, we have some technical issues. So, just wait a second. Okay, perfect. Here we go. So, as we were saying, my name is Luca. I'm a business analyst, uh, RPA business analyst for Johnson Controls. I've been employed in Johnson Controls for two years uh, and for one year working in RPA in major projects with uh, robotics. Um, here I have my colleague Andrea. Hi everyone, my name is Andrea and I'm an accountant. I was working in intercompany department uh, and I'm currently working in a project using the blockchain, blockchain technology. It's a worldwide project in which we are implementing this technology for accounting and finance reason as well as we're, we're working uh, currently with IBM and we're working in this uh, development and using this technology for our accounting purposes. So let's go to the agenda of today. Um, so the agenda of today, uh, we're gonna, of course, this was the small intro and we're gonna warm up uh, with a slide of quiz. So I invite you to uh, click on the link. Uh, and I will start to make available um, this quiz. So it's basically just a warm up, nothing to worry about. Uh, just to understand, also for us to understand uh, um, what are your um, your knowledge about the topic uh, and uh, better um, kind of do this this presentation for you all. Um, second, uh, first point of our our discussion today is going to be the evolution of accounting and. Um, um, how the, this, uh, this evolved through time, the blockchain, uh, Andrea will talk about it, and in particular, his experience with interchain, that is basically how they call uh, the use of blockchain for certain purposes inside our company. Um, then we will have uh, uh, the different applications that we have about in blockchain in other uh, scenarios, other industries. And uh, then we are gonna discuss about the Instagram case, I will discuss better later what is this about and rpa in general where is used how is used how we in johnson are um, benef beneficiaries of this and what is uh, the future for rpa uh, and then of course there's going to be a question and answer for everyone so i invite you to um to subscribe um for our quiz you have to enter your name and uh, Wait a couple of seconds. So I invite you to uh, We are having some technical. Okay, we have. Yeah. We have already three people. Three so people joined. Let's wait for uh, for let's say a couple of minutes still, or one minute, and then we can start with the, the lucky three. Um, thank you, Lucia, Nico, and Jakub. I feel a bit uh, like a YouTuber, you know, like <laughs> mentioning the name of our subscribers. Um, money. Money. Hi, money. We are very um, 
Thank you, Olivia. Subscribers. Uh, we are Juan Stano. A couple of seconds more, and then we can get started. Yeah, so wait 30 seconds, and then we can start. Okay, so uh, we can start. Uh, um, we are sorry we there are no prizes for this, but uh, a nice uh, <laughs> maybe our talent acquisition can uh, we can report you to the talent acquisition if you ever would have like applied to Johnson. So let's start the quiz. And let's wait. You have 30 seconds to answer each question. Of course, there's only one correct answer for each question. Okay, so uh, we can start. Um, we are sorry, we don't know why this is being done. Can you answer? Can you answer? Can you answer? Can you answer? So, we are going to give now the correct answer, and the correct answer is 9,000. So, are you ready for next question? Next question is going to be still about uh, no, I'm sorry, blockchain. And the question is, where is blockchain used? <laughs> so. <laughs> Okay, so let's give the answer is all of the above. Uh, we we're hoping for someone to say fishing only. But. So leaderboard, let's see. For now we have Stano. Uh, of course it counts also how fast you are to answer the question. So uh, Stano was the fastest finger. Uh, let's go to the next question. So now it's gonna be questions about RPA. What's RPA stands for? Okay, so the correct answer is robotics process automation, as most of you got it. So the next question is, for which of these scenarios cannot a bot create uh, without a artificial intelligence be created? And this is funny because it's pretty much all of you split it one for each option, more or less. But the correct answer was uh, the answer to a person in a chat. And we have we will have time to discuss this about this later. So let's go to the to the next question. And the next question is what is an ERP? ERP sorry. So, let's go to the next question. And the next question is what is an RP Okay, and the correct answer is a business management software. And of course, the last, the second, mm, sorry, the next question is going to be like, which one of these is not an ERP? Okay, so let's go to the next question. 
and the product manager is a business manager software. And so the last two steps we did the question is like which one of these is we hope you would fall for our dear Valdno, but uh, so now let's have a look to the leaderboard and we have Stano, Stano impressive, uh, only one, hmm. I'm curious to know which one, but also Moni, good to mention, just lightly, and then we have Milos. So now we're going to have the last uh, two, I guess, yes, we have the last two. Oh yeah, sorry. Free free questions. Uh, so this might be the, the important ones. So, I know. so the next question is, uh, what AR and AP stands for? Now this next question are going to be more about finance. I apologize for people that maybe have a less accounting finance background. And the correct answer is account receivable and account payable. So the next question is when cash is received, the account cash will be, this is a 50-50 opportunity. And the correct answer is. Debit it. And this one, most of you didn't get it. Interesting. So the next question is the financial statement that reports the revenues and expenses for a period of time, such as a year or a month, is the. What is it? This is the last one, guys. Equally split. It's an even split. And the correct answer is uh, very important. And this is the income statement. So thank you for participating, and let's have a look to the leaderboard. So we have money with the last uh, viewer came at the very last moment. Without of nine. Without of nine. Correct. Impressive. Stano, Stano, thank you. I mean, we are very sorry. We're on top of it all the time. <laughs> That's a great question. Work really hard. Yeah. And Milos, uh, congratulations also for you. And for the others, thank you for participating anyway. We really appreciate it. And um, now we more or less understand what is your background. Of course, we're going to have a question and answer uh, later on in this workshop. So you can have more um, of your doubts solved and answered. So I will leave the, the stage to Andrea to start to present. Uh, and thank you. OK, so as the last three questions represent, we are seeing like uh, uh, some uh, problems in the financial side. So let's have a quick recap of what finance is. Uh, we started uh, in the early century with this uh, abacus, which is a way to count things. Uh, then we moved on and we passed to the double entry accounting in which we have, uh, uh, for example, an Italian guy who invented this, uh, this new way how to count and how to set the numbers. And then with the technology going ahead, we start to move out from the paper and we decide to go from the Excel files. And as you can see on the right, we have like such Excel, we are able to calculate really hard and difficult ratios. We are able to uh, see all the three financial statements at the same time. So income statement, uh, balance sheet and cash flow statements. So just to do a quick recap in the income statement, we have like all the expenses and revenues. In the balance sheet, we have all our assets plus liabilities and stakeholders equity. And in the last one, we have the cash flow is like basically or the inflow, all the inflow and outflow of cash our company is facing. Then we move up on with the technology and all the accounting are registered using ERPs. So on the left uh, back, you can see 
in the bottom you can see a really old ERP, such as a uh, MacPack. And uh, it, it is really old, but it's still using some part of our company. We are moving on and we are going to a more centralized uh, and uh, powerful ERP. So for example, we are using uh, SAP, Oracle. Those are really innovative and we, we can do a lot of things. So in accounting in general, we started from like really basic and we are implementing the technology as much as we, as we can. One interesting technology we used recently and we moved in, uh, in our BBC, it is blockchain. We are one of the first to, to do this thing in accounting, and it was, it was really a, a great project. In Interchain, we used uh, blockchain technology. It's one of the most advanced technology uh, nowadays and the most interesting from a future perspective. It has a lot of potential uh, application in the world, and we, can, um, and we can use it really literally for almost anything. Uh, many of you, of, of you, of course, know Bitcoin, and uh, I saw that uh, um, most of you got the price right, so it means like it's pretty uh, known argument. And uh, and this uh, this Bitcoin is particularly important because it's using this this blockchain technology. This technology is a distributed ledger in which uh, the peer-to-peer -peer network is uh, working. So, for example, all the people are having the same information at the same time and all the people are uh, don't, they don't have to go to third parties for example banks uh, to get the information it's uh, distributed and this means like it's always also certified certified but all the people themselves and that gives you a, gives us an important really important property of this blockchain which means uh, the the things that uh, everything is registered there it's not uh, uh, it's not possible to um, hack it or change it because uh, of its property. So we can say, uh, for example, those blocks, and as the name said, it's like a chain of blocks. So every block block is linked to each other through a mesh, and uh, as you can say in the picture right in the bottom. Uh, every hash in the next one is the previous hash refers to the previous block. So that means like everything is linked together and in order to change something, you have to uh, delete this block, delete this chain. So everything that goes after, it's, uh, it's broken. So it's not valid anymore. That's why it gives you, uh, if some hack up, a hacker attack happens, uh, the, block, the chain of block will interrupt and then start again. So it's impossible to uh, modify the data which happens before. So in each block, it's very important we have uh, data inside. And what can be the data, for example, in Bitcoin uh, option, we, we see like from who is the transaction to who is the receiver and how much is the amount inside. So as, as you know, uh, Bitcoin are a cryptocurrency and they are not centralized so it, each transaction it is proven by the technology itself it doesn't need anything to anyone to approve it it's the technology which is guarantee the, the the validity of the transaction then there are different methods and the, the, there, there was an evolution on how this uh, uh, validation happened at the beginning there was the proof of work which is just mining and it was a uh, done by powerful servers, powerful computers, and this was really an energy consumption for, uh, for the people who were doing it. And also, there was this problem that the, the mining, uh, the pools were close together, and so they, they, could, they could try to get an advantage on it. So we moved on and we passing from my, uh, mining to validators, and this is the, the, new, the new things, which is proof, proof of stake. Then, move. then another important property is smart contracts. And those contracts are basically stored in interchain, so in the, in the blockchain, inside there. So they are already validated by the sun. We don't need third party to validate them. So for example, there is this example, really famous crowdfunding. So once you want to uh, create a project or uh, you have an idea, you put a, your idea in a third party service and you're waiting for people that finance your idea. And uh, 
with this blockchain, we don't need any more these third party service and we have to trust them every time. With the blockchain technology, we don't need to do any more. So you put uh, an idea inside the technology itself and they are investing, the people who support you, they're investing money on that. And only if the target is achieved. So for example, in order to start your, pro your project, you need 100,000 euros. And until this uh, um, uh, target is achieved, the project doesn't start. But when it's achieved, the contract itself, it gets, it gets completed and we, we go for the project. If not, the money will automatically go back to the, the investors and the project doesn't start. So this can have a lot of applications. Uh, so for example, in banks, we have loans and automatic payments. As in insurance, we have like process claims and postal, some payment of delivery, you expect a good and didn't receive it until you receive the transaction doesn't happen. And uh, the biggest player on this market of smart contracts is Ethereum, which is a, a cryptocurrency as well. Then we can see the practical uh, uh, utilization of this blockchain technology in what we do as accountant uh, and in these uh, shared service centers that Bratislava Business Center is for Johnson Controls. So we had a, a business case, uh, we had a problem in intercompany in the department in which I'm working. Uh, so we have many auto balances. What the auto balance is, is basically a difference in the book. So when you're comparing, uh, when you're doing a transaction between two entities inside the same company, you create uh, uh, an account receivable from one side and account payables from the other side. At the end of the day, at the end of the month, those uh, amounts have to be matched. They have to have the same amount. In case it's not, the relationship has some difference, so how to balance. So those how to balance can be created by different reasons. So wrongly amount posted, missing information, because before Interchain, our project, we were just exchanging uh, uh, those information by email, you know, that uh, maybe some emails couldn't, uh, were not read, or for example, they were missed, or they were in incorrect amount and everything. So we decided the solution, the right solution for to tackle this problem was to create a single uh, integrated platform in which everybody could see uh, immediately what is which the transaction is, and they have to reach the consensus before to apply those uh, account accountant uh, movements, accountability movements. So, for example, uh, if uh, an entity wants to trade with another one, in the past it was. I register my side, and then you have to register your side by yourself. In this way, with Interchain, we have to wait and get the approval first, and then uh, both parties register the side. In this way, uh, uh, we are able to reduce and eliminate most of the auto balance, so most of the problem we are facing uh, within Intercompany. And then another thing to say, and it's recalling one of the properties that blockchain has, is like after the contract is approved and registered by both sides, it's impossible to uh, change the information inside it. So once it's approved, that's it. It means like uh, uh, that anybody else can modify the information in order to maybe disrupt the, uh, the account or the, the numbers. And in this way, we are sure, 100% sure that the numbers are correct. And this project was really was really interesting because we worked uh, worldwide. So we had the cooperation with India, Mexico, uh, China, and uh, our headquarters in Milwaukee. And we were all working together. So we were covering all the different areas for intercompany uh, in Johnson Controls. But yeah, this is the usage we did as, as a group for our purposes. But as, it's, as I said before, this blockchain technology has a lot of different applications. So as we can say, uh, we, it's used also in national security, for example, uh, also in the airport, when you go to the airport and the, and the camera is, uh, could register uh, your, what happened there and the store in the place, which is not mutable, it's not, it's, uh, nobody can modify it. And also as well, I read there is a new um, idea to implement in the airport in doing check-in or check-out. So it's already everything registered what they need to know about yourself is already uh, registering this technology and you can just move there up and uh, do a quick check-in or check-out. It's used also for fine art in order to find uh, and reduce hard forgeries. 
we can see in journalism uh, and in fishing, as we, we put an example, a uh, tricky demand uh, a question before. So it was used to to see how many fish was coated and to to keep track of how many and how much you can fish in several places. Then IBM, it is our partner in this case in this, in Interchain. It was our partner and it's implementing with also other other customers. So for example, for supply chain point of view, or for banking or financial application. So this technology is really it's really important. Uh, and it has a lot of future application, and I think that I believe our in BBC we were working in really interesting program pro project, and we were we were um, moving our accounting in another level to be more accountable and precise in order to to provide better re financial results at the end to our headquarters in the world, and this is it. Then and later I can reply to your questions. If you have any, uh, for now I'm gonna pass the the word to my my friend, my dear friend Luca. <laughs> here, thank you. So thank you, Andrea. Uh, now moving on, uh, I will I will <clears throat> we'll address basically the Instagram case. So as um, I guess most of you have, if not all of you, Instagram now is the biggest social network and the biggest uh, platform, and uh, as you might have experience in uh, your uh, in your uh, surfing this, this platform is this kind of scenarios the spamming the famous spamming so you go to a post and like the first people to comment to the post is usual people that you are wondering like hmm what is this so as you can see it's like great picture your page is pretty cool come to me write to me or uh, come to visit my profile or usually some messages that I couldn't of course report in this slide and um, so basically, then you are a bit curious and you go inside the, the, the profile, maybe Oops, happens to someone, and you check these profiles and you check it's like, mm, it has zero posts, zero image, weird name, a lot of people is following, but yeah, actually the one in the bottom is actually following my account, but <laughs> a bit creepy. And um, so basically, what are these? These are uh, uh, bots. And of course, in Johnson, we don't produce this kind of bots, but we produce bots for other purposes. So um, basically, what I'm going to talk about you, to you today is the robotic process automation, as there was a question regarding this acronym. And uh, what is the robotic process automation? It's the same that you see in Instagram, but is applied for more probably useful scenarios um, to substitute some kind of uh, um, work that don't require some decision point or uh, um, some human touch let's say um, we basically how we do this we use some platforms there, there are three big uh, um, the three biggest provider are uh, automation anywhere and uh, we path and of course the one that we are currently using in johnson Controls in the whole uh, global structure that is blue Prism. We will have the opportunity, maybe, uh, if the time allows, to uh, check a bit inside this tool. And um, so, going on, why RPA? Why are we using RPA? RPA has uh, many benefits. Uh, one of these is the cost saving, of course, because the bot doesn't stop. The bot you pay for the for the development that is quite cheap. It's one of the cheapest IT thing you can find to integrate. To do an integration. Let's say with the code, you know, with the Python or JavaScript or everything, it requires a lot of money, a lot of effort, and the RPA is very cheap. About usually um, on the market, it was really like 20, 40k. Uh, so, and then to maintain, usually about dozen experts. So let's say it goes around one. It depends on a lot of factors, of course, like how is the content and everything. But it can go from 1,000 to 3,000. Depends how many times it runs and how much, um, yeah, basically how much it runs and how many other robots you have, because of course there is a scale um, economy behind it. Uh, there are significant process improvements. So basically, uh, when you put a bot, you have to standardize the process. You cannot just put the bot in a, an unstandardized process. Meaning what? That for example, if in some scenarios this can come in this way or this scenario, usually it tends to standardize to limit the development needed and to also to improve the process in general. So 
redeployment of resources to higher value functions. So basically, this is something that uh, we are going to address later in this presentation. That is that the bot will do jobs that are very basic. So you can put like your resources, meaning people, um, to do more valuable functions where they can really shine and show themselves. Uh, improve productivity and improve quality. Of course, the bot, as I was saying, it works night and day. It doesn't stop for lunch, for sleep. Um, it goes on and on. And uh, the quality, of course, is a bot. It cannot make mistakes. If it makes mistakes, it's because it was developed wrong or because the scenario changed in some way. Um, so really, the bot is also, for compliance-wise, one of the most recognized tools. And sometimes it can also avoid some approvals required maybe before uh, in, the, the, uh, in the flow. Uh, improved customer service, definitely. Um, there is like, uh, of course, as I was saying, the better quality means uh, also um, faster reply uh, and more accuracy in the data that the bot is providing to the customer in case we are talking, for example, for front office applications. Uh, improved compliance, as I was saying before, is when um, basically the bot cannot do mistake. Everything that the bot does is registered in the platform, like I was saying in Blueprint, is everything registered, everything documented. So if the bot does have mistakes, because let's say it was developed wrong or anything, we have a record of that, we have a record of what happened. And in case the bot crashes for some reasons, we have a record about where it crashed, why it crashed. So this helps in the wall uh, control and everything. Um, the question now is like, this is perfect tool and whatever, but the problem is what about finance? That is basically also the big question that we probably we are gonna answer is that, um, what about finance? What uh, all IT is gonna take over like Terminator? Um, I always bring this kind of example that is the, the loom. This is uh, basically the thing that was in the first industrial, industrial revolution. It was is a tool to um, to create clothes, to build clothes. So, so basically, what people were doing was to burn them down because they were saying, "Oh my God, they're gonna take our job, and we're gonna lose our job forever. We're gonna die because we don't have a job." And basically, this does not happen. Uh, people still nowadays are working everywhere, and uh, I mean, the rate of employment is quite pretty much high still. Uh, so, what are we facing now? It's just basically what is called the industry, uh, industry 4.0. Uh, is another industrial revolution, if we want to call it so. And what finance will be probably doing in this? It will probably more focus on customers. There are researches that show how people still want the human touch when they relate to people, especially for robot advisors that are used, for example, in portfolio building, stocks portfolio building. And people still uh, want the human touch. So what we are going through, um, we are going to uh, have a more kind of bionic um, Bionic technology, meaning that the human uh, factor and the uh, robot uh, or uh, artificial intelligence will cooperate together. Um, it's probably the robotics more as a first contact point for the customer, if we're talking about some front office. And um, it's going to be probably um, then a person, if they require like the normal cell phone you call, like your telephone company, the automatic voice, then you can speak to a person. And so, and also devotion to more important and less automatic tasks. As I was saying before, the bot usually are at the moment currently are used to replace manual jobs, manual jobs that really require just to uh, control paste, uh, to do just some checking of the data, validation also, and, or um, like uh, some, some, yeah, download of reports from some ERPs, some really basic tasks is basically a machinery that is used in the normal industry put in an office. Um, and still there is need of people that uh, work with it. As this brings to the RPA ring role. Um, there are a variety of roles related to RPA. Uh, me, myself, I'm an RPA business analyst, meaning that I collect all the documentation. I gather all the requirements from the customers on how they want their bot, when they want to run it, how they want to operate and everything. And um, so basically, this is one role. The other role, of course, is the developer. The developer is creating the bot, building, building it in, a, the, let's say, in this case, in the Blueprint platform. And then there is like the architect that is the one that is setting all the structure, the big environment, uh, meaning there is need for servers on which to run the, the, the bot. And uh, uh, there is need uh, for a whole structure of databases and uh, 
all settings for make this operate. There is the control. There are people that are basically controlling and supporting the bots that are running to check if they are failing for some reason or terminating of the server has so many problems. And there are also roles in finance, and also my background is finance before moving to RPA, and this is quite common between RPA industry, for example, especially in the service center. Um, in still in finance, usually how, how you start, you start as an SME, uh, meaning a subject matter expert. This person is usually the one that is entitled for uh, um, being the point of contact, explaining to me, to, in this case, to the business analyst, how the bots should be performed, and they know what they're talking about. In this way, they have to relate with it. And when the, once the bot will be in production, if they see that something is, um, is replaced by, uh, is replaced by, uh, is, um, is wrong, is changing the process, in the finance process, basically what he has to do is to notify the team, uh, the RPA team, and to tell them, guys, this change, we need to. So it's kind of also, the robot is kind of like a baby. We need to take care of it. We need to feed him. We need to give it work to do. And uh, also to care in case there are something that is not working fine. So there is this non responsibility. And this is happening with this, it's happening with blockchain, as Andrea was saying. And finance is even more, is we're going through the fintech, like this uh, famous word, where finance by itself probably is, um, is not enough. Uh, there is no need for competencies also in finance for IT. Um, this is something that the industry and the finance sector in particular is moving to. IT versus finance. Um, so the robotics is a clear example of how we interact with IT versus finance, I was saying before. So basically, what are the steps? The steps is first the project charter, meaning that we create uh, um, the map of how the bot, how much the bot is going to save in money and in time to the person, uh, how much is going to be the development, what is going to be the scope, what the bot is going to work on, and all the details prior to the project. Then there is the functional requirements. Basically, as I was saying before, you go to finance, you go to the SB, subject matter expert, and you gather the requirements, how you want your bot on that day to not to run. And then there is the process definition document. So basically, what we do in this stage is to create a really um, process flow, uh, process map, and all the steps on a keystroke level, meaning that you would take every step, every screenshot, and we put uh, every line or every click you do on, on the platform. Uh, after this, there is the solution design document that is basically how the process is going to be. So after you standardize the process, after you decide how the solution will work, how the people is basically describing how the future agents will interact with the bot performing. So how the, is going to be the process. Then there is, of course, the development, the testing, and there are the test alpha and the test beta. So basically, the test alpha is first the first, like the the, the developer and then the test beta is done with finance and with me and all the one that and in every step there are a lot of approvals there are a lot of um, um, gathering and checkings and everything to make sure that everything is working fine it's really the tile process that of course i cannot go deeper in and then there is the deployment meaning that we move we have three different test environments we have the development environment the, the testing environment and the production environment so we develop in the development, of course, testing the testing. And then when it's in production, we move to finally to this place, uh, this uh, running servers that needs to be set up with all the requirements like you in your laptop, you install, let's say, your ERP, your application where the bot has to work. After this, there are hypercare. So basically, as I was saying, it's a baby, it's just born, so you have to take care of it. Uh, so usually it's around two weeks in which you analyze every item that more or less, or like uh, if you did, there are too many, you just did like uh, you sort some of them randomly and you check them if they are well, if they're doing fine. Usually, it's, they, you do some rework. And then there is the control. As I was saying, you have to control afterwards, let's say after one year, two years that the bot is running, you have to check that everything is running fine, that the bot is fine. And it can happen that you have to rework. So basically, this whole process is like we call it agile. We do agile in Johnson, especially for RPA. Um, in which we have basically is a circle. You go back to each step every time there is need for a, a rework. It's very fluid. It's not a waterfall system, as you might have heard from a project management, but it's more a cycle. So you develop, you test, you put in production a small part of the project. Then you develop another part of it, and then you go on like this, on and on, until you have your final product that satisfies all the requirements. 
of them. Uh, where are bots used in finance? So bots are basically used for finance review preparation, account reconciliation, standard journal entries, bank reconciliation, accounts payable processing, and accounts receivable processing. Um, this is something that we were already discussing about it. And um, so basically, I mean, these are the main functions where we have it. Sorry, I have to, to speed it up a bit. Uh, maybe we have some later. So let's go back to the Instagram. And I want to give you a practical example of how it works. So basically, as you can see, uh, and I'm going to start this video. So basically, these are recording of the bot performing. This is our tool, Blue Prisma. And here I'm basically built a bot, uh, you know, to make you understand better, uh, a bot that is um, going to go in Instagram and perform what usually uh, bots do. Uh, so basically, as you can see, it's basically using the same uh, um, user interface as any other uh, user. That's the easiest way. So you don't have to ask uh, to them to, in, um, like, let's say you have a target application. You don't have to. Uh, contact the person of the target acquisition in every case, which you can just automate, they will not even recognize. So that's why there are all those kachka, uh, meaning the one like, I'm not a robot, um, ticks, because basically the, the bot is not able to recognize that is, um, that is uh, a field, so it's not able to tick it. Um, because there is an action that is called spying, that uh, basically recognize where is the field so he knows where to click, like in this case. As you can see, we chose Johnson, he's gonna like, and he's gonna put like trick picture, like all our lovely spam bots that we, that we have. Um, so this is the, um, the show. Uh, as you can see, this is basically Blue Prism, how it looks like. It looks like a process flow, basically. Um, inside there, of course, there are some more stages that in here are not, that you can see in here in other tabs. So there are decision points, there are uh, clicks, uh, there are writings, there are readings, uh, so the bot can read the thing. And as you can see here, there are all the, um, the basic tasks that you can drag and then you can link and all the other things. So uh, going to what next? Well, the last thing we, we want to talk is wh where are we going now? Um, this is gonna be like the so-called caption 2.0. What it means? It means that so far, bots and robotics were able just to read stuff like standardized inputs. So let's say uh, a field uh, in an application or uh, um, an, a PDF. Uh, so it was not able to kind of read it um, by like, let's say, like a person, like an email that is unstandardized. Uh, what is going to happen in the future is like, as you might have uh, all uh, like Siri, or uh, Alexa and all that stuff, they're already progressing in this. So basically understand what you're saying and coding and uh, analyzing and elaborate in a way that you did. they can provide an input. Um, and yeah, Internet of Things also, thank you, Andrea. And uh, so basically, and also it can be for reading, like I was saying, they can understand an email and elaborate and understand what is where is the field that they need and all other stuff. Um, then we have, uh, of course, the smart process automation. Basically, what is it? Is the RPA on steroids, let's say. Um, so we have uh, the use in this of artificial intelligence. So the robot will be able to kind of think about it. Uh, we will have the machine learning. Uh, so basically, we, um, the bot will be able to kind of fix himself. He will learn. There will not need for the developer to go there, back and uh, code, but let's say they have a one standard size of uh, a PDF on invoice. It comes a new supply with a new different standard invoice. The first time will not be able to process it, so a normal person will process it. But then it will go back, and the next time you will see that it will recognize because you saw how the person did it. So it's gonna learn in that way. Then big data and cloud, uh, cross cloud, you know what, how it is. And how it works. So I can see we have already a question for you. Yeah, and this is also the end of my presentation. So. Let's give space for you guys for your, uh, for your questions. For you, it's uh, related to robotics. Bot for marketing, for example, to chat with customer. Okay, this is anonymous, okay. If I want to use a bot for marketing, for example, to chat with customers on Facebook, is bot able to come out uh, with new answer by himself or he can just answer by sentences I put in, into memory? And this is related to what, what I was just saying. Uh, there are already, like Microsoft is selling artificial intelligence packages for bots that they will, and they're called chatbots. And we have also a project that 
is related to this one that we are scoping at the moment, uh, using the artificial intelligence to get some inputs, let's say, from customer asking on the status of their invoices. That's one of the biggest thing we have. So um, basically, yes, you can, uh, but artificial intelligence is still a bit, let's say, expensive. Especially, I don't know if you are uh, working for a corporate or for an organization, uh, company, or by yourself. Uh, if you're working for a, for a company, um, yes, I think, I mean, that's where the, basically uh, all the corporates are moving to because we need, and that's the big limitation of how robotics was done in the past years, that the bot was not able to understand uh, and needs to understand the nice one. That's, uh, that's basically, I hope I answered your question. Uh, we got still some time, eight minutes for, uh, for uh, any additional questions if you would like to submit. Um, in the meanwhile, I could maybe show you uh, how, how the Blue Prism works. So as you can see here, um, is basically, this is the main page, uh, and in here you have the fields with all the, um, with all the, the passwords and the comments you want to put. Then going inside, like uh, you have, of course, launch of Explorer, then you have all the decision point. Of course, this is quite a very basic bot that we create in our spare time. And uh, so it's not a, some decision point. Just here, in case it doesn't find the field like that is needed, it's going another way. Uh, so basically, as you can see, there are some weights. Then here, of course, we have the write. So basically, the bot will be able to write some action and read us or recognize uh, what is written in there. So to save, let's say, that input somewhere in a way that you can use later. It can be an invoice number or anything. Then we have the, the navigate. So basically, uh, clicking on buttons on the, on the browser or on the application. Wait points. Code, because sometimes it needs some coding. So. Um, that ones in case you need to interact and to ask the application owner to give you access to kind of go back door. Uh, and then you have actions that are lead some kind of group of this and choices and decision point and calculations, of course, the bot. And then there are some extensions. We work a lot with Excel and everything the bot is able by itself to, um, to work with it. So any other questions coming? <clears throat> Sorry. Still have six minutes. Any question related to accounting as well or to the blockchain? Whatever it comes to your mind, we can we might be able to help you. Well. Question page. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna wait a couple of minutes more in case there are not uh, any questions. We can we can close. Yeah, we can close the, the presentation.
Okay, so thank you everyone for listening today. Um, we really appreciate your attention and thank you also for your answers to the slide. It was really fun. Um, in case you, uh, uh, you are more inter still interested in other stuff, uh, you can contact, of course, Johnson Controls. So you can contact our talent acquisition. I guess they are still available in uh, their uh, virtual space. So don't, don't hesitate to go there and check out uh, what are the opportunities for you for Johnson. Johnson. And we hope to see you soon. I mean, so thank you for this. Yeah, and in case you want to apply, my name is Andrea. I can give you a referral. So <laughs> I, can, I can talk with you. Yeah. So. Thank you a lot and have a nice rest of the day. Bye.